All right, we're going to jump into section 16.1 here, which is on segments and midpoints. Uh, segments you might remember from um, your middle school geometry. Segments um, are kind of like lines, except that they have endpoints, so they don't go on forever. So they're just like parts of a line, basically. Um, we're going to start by looking at uh, distance formula. So um, if you haven't printed out these note sheets, which are available on Google Classroom, then you'll want to pause the video real quick and jot down this formula because it looks a little bit big. Um, and it's written right here, and it says that the distance, so the distance between two points, uh, is given by the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Um, and so we'll just jump into an example here to take a look at what this um, or how this formula works. So the first problem here is asking me to calculate the distance between these two points. And so we've done this before where we can label these points as uh, x1 and y1. That's going to be my first point right there. And then I'm going to call this one x2 and y2. And it doesn't matter which point is which, right? You can do it either way, but the ones have to stay together and the twos have to stay together. Um, and then I can just go ahead and reference that formula that we wrote above and just start to plug in here. So for me, this is gonna look like this. D equals the square root. So I've got the giant square root there. And it says x2 minus x1. So I'm gonna look at x2, that's gonna be the number three minus x1, which is negative 2. So notice right off the bat there I have a minus minus, right? So there's going to be a keep change change there in a second. And now my formula says plus, and we're going to do y2 minus y1, so that's going to be 4 minus positive 1 squared. And now I'm going to start to simplify. So We've got uh, d equals square root. So like I said, 3 minus negative 2, that turns into a positive. So that's going to actually end up being 3 plus 2, which is 5 squared, plus 4 minus 1, which is 3 squared. And then we can continue to evaluate this. This is going to be the square root of, let's see, 5 squared, which is 25, plus 3 squared, which is 9. So now I've got my distance here is going to be the square root of 25 plus 9 gives me 34. Okay. Uh, 34 is not a perfect square, so I'm going to have to see if I can break this down like we did with radicals before. Remember, we're looking for pairs here. That would be 17 times 2, and that's as far as I can go, right? So I don't get any pairs there. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave this as the square root of 34. All right, and that would be some sort of a decimal. If I were to evaluate that on my calculator, okay, that would be somewhere near 5.8 or so. So on your homework, make sure at the very end when you get to this radical, you go ahead and try to break it down because you might get some pairs and be able to simplify your radical. Let's try one more. So notice that this is just a lot of uh, plugging into a formula, right? So if you have that formula in front of you, then you should be able to just kind of plug in your numbers and evaluate, right? Not a ton of thinking here, just a lot of uh, small areas for some uh, arithmetic mistakes. So here's example two. It says, how far is negative 4, 4 from the origin? So we have to identify that the origin is a point, and hopefully we know which point that is. Remember, the origin on our graph is 0, 0. So we're trying to figure out the distance between these two points here, negative 4, 4, and 0, 0. And once again, I'm going to label these as x1 and y1 and x2 and y2. And then I'm going to go ahead and start to plug into my distance formula. All right, so we have d equals the square root of... So remember, if you forget it, you can scroll back up to the top. Hopefully you've got it in front of you there. Okay, so it starts with x2 minus x1. So for me, that's going to be 0 minus negative 4 squared plus 
y2 minus y1, so that's going to be 0 minus positive 4 squared. And then I'm going to go ahead and evaluate here, and notice again I have another keep change change. So that becomes square root of, let's see, 0 minus a negative 4 is going to turn into a positive 4 squared plus 0 minus 4, that's going to be negative 4 squared. And then we can continue to work here, so this is going to turn into 4 squared, which is 16 plus negative 4 squared. Remember, if you're squaring a negative, it turns into a positive number. So negative 4 squared is actually positive 16, which is going to give me the square root of 32. And then once again, I'm going to try to break down this 32, see if I get any pairs. And I think this one's going to work out for us. So we're going to go ahead and do, I'm going to do 16 times 2. And then I'm going to break down 16 into 4 times 4. And I'm going to circle those fours right there's a pair right there so I can stop with those that's a pair they get married and remember they move on the outside and then whatever was left over in this case a two goes back into the radical right it doesn't have any partner so it's got to go back in and we end up with our answer there all right I'll keep moving here we're going to take a look at the midpoint formula now Midpoint formula is similar. This is going to find us the point in between okay, or in the middle here. Um, again, if you haven't printed out these note sheets, why don't you go ahead and pause it real quick and write down our midpoint formula. So if I'm looking for the point that's in the middle, right? notice that this is going to be an XY ordered pair, right? Because let me draw you a quick diagram here. If I have some segment, and I want the point that's in the middle, well, this is going to have an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate, right? Some point that's right in the middle of that segment. And so there's the formula for it there. It says uh, the middle of the x's would be x1 plus x2 divided by 2, kind of like you're finding the average. And then the middle of the y's would be you add up the y values and divide by 2, and you can get the midpoint. Let's check it out. <clears throat> says which quadrant is the midpoint of negative 2, 3 and 5, negative 7. So notice for this one, um, first we're going to have to find the midpoint and then we'll figure out which quadrant on my graph it's in. So to find the midpoint, I use that midpoint formula. It says I'm going to take my x values and I'm going to add them up. So in this case, it's going to be negative 2 plus 5. Those are the x values and divide by 2. And then we're going to do the same thing for the y value. So in this case, it's going to be 3 plus negative 7 and divided by 2. And now I can go ahead and simplify here. Negative 2 plus 5, that gives me a positive 3 over 2. Comma, let's see, 3 plus negative 7, that's negative 4 over 2. And now I'm going to go ahead and simplify again. 3 divided by 2 is going to give me uh, 1.5, comma, let's see, negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. And so I end up with this point. This is my midpoint right here. But notice they want me to figure out which quadrant this is in. So if I go ahead and draw myself a graph real quick, and I go to this point here, 1.5 comma negative 2. Well, 1.5 is going to move me somewhere over here, right, in the positive x direction. And then negative 2 is going to be somewhere down here. So I know that this point is going to end up in that quadrant. And if you recall, we have quadrant 1, quadrant 2, quadrant 3, and this would be quadrant 4. And that's the one that we ended up in here. And then one last problem here, taking a look at the midpoints here. It says M is the midpoint of segment AB. So we have this segment AB. I'm going to go ahead and draw it here. There's A, B, and it tells me that M is the midpoint. 
So M is right in the middle. So I've got my diagram there. It says if A is at negative 6, 4, so I'm going to put that there for A, negative 6 and 4, and M is at positive 2, 7, find the other endpoint. So I'm looking for B. So this one's a little bit different, right, because they didn't give me both of the endpoints, right? That's when I can use the formula. This one, they kind of gave me the middle here, right? I have to find the other endpoint. And so I think that the best way to do this is to just look at the x values and then look at the y values separately. Because remember, we're looking for some sort of an x and a y over here, right? We have to figure that part out. So if I look at the x values first, it's negative 6 to positive 2. So if I think about how far away negative 6 is from positive 2, right? That's 8 units away, right? Think of it on a number line. So negative 6 up to positive 2, that would be 8 units that I'm adding, right? So I'm adding 8 to it. So if I want to go onto the other side, I'm going to add another 8, which is going to put my x value at 10. We can do the same things with the y's now. So if I look at y, it goes from 4 to 7. Well, from 4 to 7, I'm adding 3. So if I want to get to the next endpoint, then I'm going to add another 3, which is going to bring me to 10 in this case. And so then we can figure out that other endpoint, which is at 10, 10. All right, thanks for watching.